Hello, Kevin Clarkson here. I want to just invite you to our next conference, Prophecy Summit. It's going to be in beautiful Colorado Springs, Colorado, August 6th, 7th, and 8th. And we would love to have you join us. We'll be at the Marriott Hotel on Tech Center Drive there in Colorado Springs. We have a lineup of 22 speakers. And although I'm not going to name all of them right now, some of our headliners are Bill Salas, uh, Dr. Gary Frazier, Don Perkins, Pastor Billy Crone, Bob Cornuke, who will be telling us about his uh, discovery of a possible another site for the temple in Jerusalem. Jerome Corsi of World Net Daily, Joseph Farah of World Net Daily, Dan Goodwin, one of our favorite Kentucky preachers, uh, Jim Fletcher, a great prophecy student. These and others, I'll be there myself. I look forward to always meeting those of you that are a part of our audience and follow the uh, prophecy of the Lord and how it's playing out in world events today. I hope you'll join us. Hello and welcome to this edition of Prophecy in the News. I'm your host, Dr. Kevin Clarkson. My guest today, Pastor Billy Crone from Las Vegas, Nevada. Welcome, Bill. Thank you, Kevin. It's uh, great to be on. Hey, it's great to have you. We just uh, finished a, a uh, Prophecy Summit together in Orlando. Yeah. And you were a speaker. We had a great time. Yep. Lots of guests. And, and I don't know all the things that you spoke on. I heard you in the general session but i didn't hear your breakout yeah you've got some brand new material uh on your what you've dubbed uh, several years ago as the final countdown mm -hmm. and you keep supplementing and yeah. you know you know we're learning knowledge is doubling every what year yeah we're having so much happen today we're globally connected satellite intercommunication there's so much information that nobody can take it all in yeah and we are rapidly racing to armageddon oh yeah yeah well, as you mentioned with the, the original Final Countdown study that we did, uh, 50 studies. Yeah. Uh, still current information. It's not that old. It's still very applicable, very current. Uh, it's a great study. Uh, frankly, that was 50 studies that I did from the pulpit. You know, video clips. Uh, there was a lot of work. Uh, and But we did it with the video clips and the pictures right. and the evidence and the interviews and all that stuff uh, to hopefully satisfy the scoffer to realize that no this is not from joshmo.com this yeah. is a legitimate you know here's the actual un video here's the actual talking here's the president saying this i'm not here's what they did in israel here's right and that's what i love about your work you don't just uh you know describe it you literally put the media to right, it right and, and uh but having gone 50 weeks 50 studies yeah going the gamut all the way from uh, the jewish people to worldwide upheaval wars earthquakes famines, I mean, world government uh, one world government one world economy cashless society the rise of apostasy wicked the whole gamut frankly to be honest with you i i really didn't have plans going back in it to it for a while yeah. but god had other directions and so yeah, now we kind of took off we did another program you kind of did a, a break and did some stuff in genesis which i found fascinating yeah yeah absolutely and, and it always is those are the bookends genesis and revelation and yeah those are the two most, uh, shall I say, attack books in all the Bible. Oh, yeah. Well, because if you can't believe the beginning then and you scoff at that, then you're going to scoff at the ending. And Satan hates them because they describe how he started and how he ends. Absolutely. <laughs> and how God wins every single That's time. Amen. And, uh, but uh, so much happened so fast as I was off doing other studies, uh, still researching on you know, prophecy and the behind the scenes, but stuff started stacking up so much. I'm going, you've got to be kidding me. I really? you, you talked about information growing things, yeah, yeah. Uh, right? Uh, where I'm going with this. Remember Daniel 12, knowledge will be increased. Yeah. And that word almost means multiplied in Hebrew. Right. It's an exponential explosion of knowledge. Well, and that's what I began to experience. Even after just finishing that 50 week study, there was so much happening so fast, I can't even keep up with it. Yeah. And so it started to build up and I'm going, man, and begin to pray and God had me back in. So now we put out the final countdown update. Well, let's talk about some of the things that you cover in the final countdown update one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, basically what we did is basically the same premise. We, we dealt with the big 10 signs. How do you know you're living in the last days? The final countdown. Uh -huh. And, begin and you pull those originally from, of course, Matthew 24, mm -hmm. all of it discourse where Jesus says, these are the signs of his yeah. coming. Yeah. Earthquakes and uh, famines and nation rising against nation and yeah. false Christ, false prophets. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, all those things. Fig yeah. tree blooming. Yeah, yeah, the, the Jewish people, yeah. and then, of course, Revelation 13 with the Antichrist, false prophet, one world government, one world religion, all the, all the classic, you know, we just picked the, the, pig, the big uh, tin ones, if you right. will. So we basically start at the beginning, and even though that other study is not old, still current information. You got even more. This is literally hot off the press. Uh, just finished that up probably a couple of weeks ago. This is another 30 studies altogether 30. Uh, on the big tin items. 
Wow. And uh, we had talked before about the Jewish people, giving an update on that, what's going on with that, and definitely the rise of anti-Semitism, but also with modern technology and things of that nature, uh, as well as the worldwide upheaval. Um, we, we didn't talk about, uh, uh, maybe we can talk about that now sure. uh, for the viewers, but uh, uh, with the rise of uh, apostasy. Okay. And give an update on that. Any of those topics, oh. let's, let's, let's bite into it. I do want to get to... Uh, what you found most recently about technology, but I'll try to hold that. Okay. Let's talk about apostasy uh, for a moment. Apostasy has gone absolutely crazy. Uh, I've noticed this as increased. It's one of those signs I call it's under the radar. Uh -huh. You know, as Christians, even schooled in prophecy, we know that the world's getting more wicked. That's the sign we're in the last days. Paul talks about that, right? Right. And uh, we know that, uh, you know, there's going to be a technology to produce some sort of a mark of the beast system. And we see that. We know yeah. that. We know about a new world order and big brother and stuff like that. But it's like we don't realize how far we progressed in this other Bible <clears throat> prophecy sign in the last days. The church is going to apostatize. And it says specifically there uh, that they're going to uh, want to have their ears tickled, right? right. Uh, it's kinetho in the Greek. It means only pleasant things. This is uh, 2 Timothy 4. Yes. And also it says they deliberately turn away. And this is in the church, the context. And, and they also turn away from the truth and turn aside to myths or muthos, literally stories made up. Myth so, Mythos, right. Mythos, yeah. right. Myth. And so, so how do uh, they? Uh, uh, how do you know you're living the last days? Not just when you see an increase of wickedness in the world, but when you see in the church, by and large, the only thing you get from the pulpit is pleasant things, yeah, and stories made up, self-help sermons. That's probably ninety percent of Seven what's going on in the to church. Get along today. with your mother-in-law, right? You know, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or how to build your self-esteem, or be financially yeah. successful, or whatever, anything and everything but the wrath of God. Repentance, Judgment. the gospel, uh, certainly Bible prophecy, hell. You, you don't hear that. Yeah. All that is not just normal now in the American church. All that is a sign we're living in the last days. Yeah. But it's going to. But it is normative in the American church. It, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. It, it is. I mean, pastors don't speak about hell. Pastors, and we we saw at our conference. Why won't my one of the topics Jim Fletcher did? Why won't my pastor preach about prophecy? Yeah. Yeah. Well, and part of it is you know some of the things that we share on here is. Uh, uh, part of the reason why is because, again, the church growth movement and uh, because they have uh, bought into a lie with yes. all due respect. And uh, and it's not just them. It's just how they're trained in the seminaries and Bible colleges today. This is how it's being reinforced in denominational headquarters. Well, state that, that lie, you know, the, well, the one and, they bought into. And the lie is your focus as a shepherd is not about spiritual growth. Or truth. It's about numerical growth. Right. And you got to, whatever you got to do to keep the numbers up, that has now become the definition of a so-called successful church. So compromise. So in. go to marketing techniques. Uh, don't talk about hell. Don't talk about wrath. Don't talk about sin. Don't preach through Bible prophecy because, hey, your attendance goes down. And if your attendance goes down, uh, then your offerings will probably go down. Then you can't afford your big dream of having all this stuff, stuff right? And believe it or not, that's <coughs> how it's, it's not just individual pastors. It's, that's how they're trained. It is. That's how it they're is. coming out. I had a professor at my alma mater, uh, which I won't mention by name, but where I studied uh, for ministry, and he said uh, all the ministry students today, they don't want courses on theology. They want courses on methodology. Yeah, yeah. How and can I grow my church? Yeah, exactly. It's, and, and Jesus said to the disciples, obviously, as you know, uh, go out there into all the world and make disciples, disciples discipline learners. Yeah. Uh, methetes there. Uh, in the Greek, you know, it's like we're mathematics. That's a disciplined right. study. You know, it's not nothing willy nilly. Focus concentration. Yeah. Absolutely. Problem so solving. that's what you're supposed to do. Yes. Not just jack up the numbers and s do slick marketing techniques. And s no. Do you do you deal with some of the uh, the coming uh, changes in the millennial uh, millennial? I I don't know what to call them. Do I say evangelicals? They don't want to be called evangelicals anymore. Yeah. They they want to embrace. Uh, homosexual marriage they want to not really have any standards anymore of behavior uh -huh. uh, well even to the point where the church services are now being catered towards that crowd yeah not the truth but to the crowd so the crowd keep coming back so your numbers can stay up and your finances that's the whole game that's being played believe it or not uh, but uh, they're even uh, changing the services not only in the context uh -huh. and the content that's coming from the pulpit uh, to be non-convicting but even the music and they're gutting the music uh, in the church and you know some of the uh, examples we brought up before like amazing grace that saved a wretch like me yes they're getting word of the word wretch just saved a soul like me or a person like me 
because wretch doesn't feel good no. to somebody who doesn't want to feel bad. Uh, I, I, I many exa- victory in Jesus, right? Getting rid of the word wretch that's contained there. Uh, recently in the Presbyterian Church, they axed the song in Christ alone. Why? Because uh, there's a line there that says, and the wrath of God was satisfied. I remember the line. Right? Well, the, I love the theology of that hymn because it's biblical. It's biblical, but you know what? We're not going to stay with the Bible. That's right. So, but, so they, they approached the songwriters and they said, we want to change this uh, to the love of God was magnified and said the wrath of God was satisfied, satisfied right? And uh, of course the songwriter said no, so they axed it from their uh, congregational song. This is happening all over the place. But not only that, you mentioned uh, with the behavior, uh, the church now has uh, bought into this lie for so long that you don't preach on sin. Uh, it's all about fluff and stuff of that nature that now the church is welcoming sin. And this is where you're seeing the major slide with what's going on with homosexuality and not just individually, but now being promoted in the pulpit, well, behind in, the pulpit. In cohabitation, that is, you know, just couples live together. Yeah. Uh, really amazing the number of uh, so-called Christian young people that just live together first. Yeah. And may or may not get married. It's uh, it's pretty pandemic. Yeah, it is. And but what happened that there, you know, you don't preach on you don't preach the truth. Right. I, I just dealt with this uh, Wednesday night again in, in our study in, in Las Vegas at sunrise. And uh, once again, the text, you know, the, what's the word of God useful for? Yeah. Teaching. Uh, keep going. Correction. Right. Reproof. Proof, and then training in righteousness. Right. So uh, what, what, it's not just teaching. It's not just training in righteousness. What's tucked away in the middle? Correction and reproof. Right. So are those pleasant things? No, I mean, always. they're for you good, but they're they, ooh, ouch. Yeah. They, yeah. Yeah, that's right. right. So I said, listen, if it, how do you know if you're being taught the whole counsel of God? If 50% of the time you're squirming in your seat, and if you never squirm in your seat, somebody's lying to you. You're being entertained. You're exactly. And, and, but, but because of that, uh, every, mm-hmm. it's all lovey-dovey now. It's all, and yeah. what it's spilled into is another Bible prophecy sign, and that is the rise of a one-world religion. And this is some of the bombshell stuff that uh, shared at the conference, but we got in greater detail uh, in, in these uh, new s- studies. Let me stop and, and show people your, your uh, resource here before we go on and hold that thought. Okay. Because I'll forget if I don't do this now. Folks, we're talking with Pastor Billy Crone. He had an original set called The Final Countdown. This is like a mega smack. I mean, this, you can beat off demons with this. It, it's uh, <laughs> got 50, uh, well, no, I'm, yeah, 50 messages in this, 25 yeah. DVDs. Yeah. And this whole thing is, I think, $129. But it's, it's a wealth of material on the signs of the times and the countdown to the Lord's return. The updates, though, uh, update one and two, this comes, uh, well, they're both number one, excuse me. This comes with uh, recent um, stuff added that is um, current, cutting edge. And you said this one has, um, I think, 30 messages 30, yep. on 15 DVDs. And uh, this is selling for sixty nine ninety five. Now, you've done something new with the technology. Yeah. The one I just showed you, <coughs> some of you will love this and some of you will go, oh, no, I can't keep up. This is uh, 15 DVDs, 30 messages. This is the content of 50 DVDs, 30 messages. This is what I called a thumb drive and you called it a something stick. Yeah, yeah. What, what was the word you uh, used? Memory stick. Memory yeah, stick, so, yeah. okay. All of that content is on here. You simply plug it into your uh, computer and you've got all the video content right here yeah. of uh, 15 DVDs, 30 messages. Yeah. This little handy thing. Yeah, it, it's, a, it's a very convenient, especially for a lot of people that you know, a lot of people now are on the go on the fly. And those two things are uh, either one of them is sixty nine ninety five mm-hmm. yeah. to our website or our eight hundred number on your screen. And uh, anyway, uh, let's jump back into the content of that, not just the fact yeah. of that. Yeah. Uh, we're talking about the apostasy, and I could talk with you several programs about that. That's a great concern of mine. Yeah. Um, if there's any outstanding fact you want to make yet, and then let's try to go toward the technological advances. Well, you know, some of the big. Uh, big issues that concern is just not just with behavior of the American church, the fluffiness, but the fluffiness is really, I would say, prepared the heart, uh, apostate heart, to go to the next level. The, the one next, world religion. And the next level is, it's all about love, right? Right. So now can't we all just get along? And it's fed into this ecumenical movement. And there's, hey, the Bible talks about unity, but not at the expense of truth. That's right. Right? And I do not link my hands with somebody. I'll witness to somebody. I witness to anybody yeah. who doesn't know Christ. But I don't link my hands and work together with somebody who's preaching a false gospel. Right. Uh, et cetera. But that's what's going on in, in the church. Now, 
this has been going on for quite some time. We, we deal with this uh, and dealt with it before, and we give an update on it now. The Vatican is a big-time uh, promoter uh, with this uh, One World Religion movement. It's going on for uh, John Paul uh, II, and, and even before, but he was really ramping it up in his days. And we share video clips of what he did at the Vatican and all calling all the religions to come together. Uh, put the uh, He allowed the Dalai Lama to put the Buddha on the altar there and burn incense and snake worshipers, fire worshipers, Shintoists, all that. And then the Pope gets up there and says, we're all praying to the same God. That's been going on. Now, and they, it's been promoted. And the new Pope, Pope Francis, yes. gave an update on what he, boy, whew, he's a universalist. He is going to town. He's making it so easy uh, for anybody to be a part of this one world religion uh, that they want to head up uh, the Vatican. Uh, that he's even saying it doesn't matter if you even believe in God, whether you're an atheist or a yeah, homosexual. Even are come one, be, come all. Right. Just make sure you're part of this one world religion, uh, and and that's bad enough. But we give a serious sobering update, video clips. It's all on tape, and we share for the first time since the Reformation, when the Protestant Church broke away from the stranglehold of the Catholic Church, the Protestant Church is now going back to Rome. Yeah. And I'm talking in a big, massive one. And one of the ones that we share, I don't know if you've seen it or not, but it's on the video, so you can see it with your own eyes. We got the actual video from the actual church service, Kenneth Copeland. And Kenneth Copeland <coughs> uh, piped in a private message from Pope Francis saying, we're all brothers now, we're all one in Christ. Then the bishop, who's in, Tony Palmer, who is introducing uh, the Pope, he gets up after the Pope's message and gives another spiel. And he said, it's on video. It's just, it sends chills up your spine. Oh boy. Especially if you know at what cost it took for the Reformation, for to have something as simple as the Bible for the common man, you and I, oh, yes. to have even in, in modern language. Um, but uh, uh, he gets up there and he says, we're all one now. It's on, on video. And he says, uh, uh, the Protestant Reformation is over. Right? He says that, uh, and if there is no more uh, protest, how can there be a Protestant church? He said, maybe we're all Catholics now. That was freaky enough, and it's on video. Yes, okay. Okay, but the reaction to the audience is what's numbing. They just applauded. And this cheered. is a so-called Protestant church, right? Now, I'm hoping that you know, the viewers know that Kenneth Copeland, I'm not promoting his ministry at all, Right. not just with this, but he's a false teacher, word right. of faith heretic, and that whole nine yards. But, but I, I tell people this, this is, stop, just even with that aside. What if this Sunday your pastor gets up there and pipes in a private message from the Pope, says we're all brothers now, you, your pastor allows a Catholic bishop to get up there and say the Protestant Reformation's over and uh, we're all Catholics again. That's freaky, but that's just the beginning of the beginning of the beginning. It isn't just Kenneth Copeland. What we're seeing for the first time since the Reformation, the uh, Protestant church, mm -hmm. because of all this apostasy, is going and it's going fast. I can't believe how much it's escalated in just the last year. We go into, give an example uh, with, uh, of the Protestant charismatic community. They're over there high-fiving uh, the Pope, saying we're all brothers now in Christ, and so they're falling for that. Of course, we give an update with Joel Olstein, who loves the Pope and thinks he's great, uh, who, by the way, we even record with the apostasy, uh, Joel Olstein's wife on tape said, listen to this, this is how self-centered uh -huh. it's become, that uh, a, your worship of God in a church service has nothing to do with God, it has about making yourself feel good. That's the number one law of Satanism. Yes, it is. As do what you will of law, self-love. It's all do about what self. Will. That's the heart of Satanism being preached from the, the pulpit today. So Joel Olsen, but the big one, wow. and I couldn't wait to share this. I've been sitting on it for a little while. Came across an interview with Rick Warren on a Catholic channel, EWTN. And I don't know how many Protestant Christians have seen this, but this is on tape, and we share it. Wow. And on tape, he not only admits that he has pictures in his office behind his desk for inspiration, one being the Pope, Mother Teresa, but he freely admits, he uses words of Pope Francis. He says, Pope Francis is doing everything fantastic. He fully supports him, even the Roman Catholic Church evangelism, even having the Vatican send delegates over to Saddleback to teach them to evangelize even better. Oh my. On tape. Really? On tape. And then he goes on and... Uh, uh, he says that, uh, uses words like our Pope, us Christians, it's on tape. Then if that wasn't freaky enough, uh, he, he says that uh, EWT and the Catholic channel is his favorite, quote, Christian channel by far. Then he calls out a program by name. 
And uh, he says that when him and his wife uh, have a, a stressful day, and uh, what they, their routine is, they come home and they watch this Catholic uh, channel and this Catholic program called the Chaplet of Divine Mercy with Mother Angelica, right? As nun. And he says, we, we sit there and we, we focus and we worship God with this program. So I went and researched that program down and you can see it on there. You know what that program is? I have it's, no idea. It's the most chilling thing. It's like, are you serious? And it's just rosaries repeated over Seriously. and over. I, you got, I'm telling you, you've got to see with your own eyes. It's the most mind blowing, speechless thing ever. And so, and so, and then it's just, it's just repetition Catholic. That's all the show is. Just these people repeating Catholic church. It's freaky because it's like this weird chant. Oh, uh -huh. right. And it's, I'm going, wait a second. So this is the program that you and your wife worship God to after a stressful day. Reciting Catholic prayers. Wow. My, my challenge uh, in the teaching is, okay, so put all this together. You're seeing the Protestant church slide and go back into this one world religion. Right, uh, the Vatican's being, wanting to be the headquarters of it, okay, amongst others. But uh, when push came, comes to shove, not just with Kenneth Copeland, not just with the charismatic community, not with just Joel Olstein, but now Rick Warren. When push comes to shove, and the Pope or some crisis comes all, and maybe it's going to be over the 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 uh, ISIS or you know Hamas and all. We you know we we we, we we've all got to come together now as religions right. officially. Do you think Rick Warren's going to resist? Doesn't How many like people it. is he going to lead astray? This is at the level we're at. These are the days that we live in. Never before in the history of the church and never before since the Reformation are we seeing what's going on right now. It, it's just mind-blowing. Yeah, it is. Wow. Well, we, we, we don't have a ton of time left, but let's talk about some of the more uh, advanced technologies that you're dealing with here since uh, the, the former update. Yeah. Well, one thing, of course, we do, we have uh, just four studies just on, once again, the update on Big Brother. Big Brother, of course, kind of coincides with the topic one world government. Society. Absolutely, because it says there in Revelation 13 about the Antichrist and the false prophet. They uh, order, they force, yeah. uh, they cause. I mean, so you got they some. Compel. So how are you going to do this on a, on a, on a global scale? Global, yeah. Well, you got to have, logically, some sort of surveillance technology, listening, monitoring technology to be able to cause this to happen to it's it's gone so far it's it's mind blowing uh and uh we we talk about just literally starting from the sky working your way down even down into your cell phone we got a whole whole study just on what they're doing to monitor you to with cell your phone, with your cell phone technology and just to give you a little a little teaser yeah, of what's please. on there one of the technologies and this is secular knowledge there's no conspiracy theory this is already out there it's been out there is this uh, satellite system uh called Argus Okay, Argus is, uh, I think, about 17,500 feet, just rotates like a drone satellite. And uh, they monitor whole cities at a whack. And they, not, and, and they literally, from that high up, they can literally see what you're doing on your cell phone <laughs> from that high up. But it's, it's not just an individual person. It's not just a parking lot. It's whole cities at a swath is what this technology does. Not only that, it records it, not just take pictures. This is how far it's advanced. They're, they're videotaping, high-def videotaping. Idea. And so what that's allowed them to do, and they admit that this is a secular program exposing this, and we share the video clip, and it's, they, it literally now gives them a search engine capability, video search engine from the sky. For images? Hey, video clips, right? So let's say so they were saying, okay, we've been monitoring Oklahoma City, unbeknownst to Oklahoma City, and I don't want just pictures of Dr. Clarkson. I want to see what he's been doing in video, wherever he's been. They literally could type that in and they will backtrack It'll two, three days out. ago and they'll follow you everywhere you went. This is not make-believe. This yeah. is current technology. Now, that's bad enough, right? Google is one of the big promoters of this. All right, you think 17,500 feet up is wild, out of sight? You, you have no idea you're being monitored? Uh, they just bought, uh, they're investing in companies right and left and they're creating a weird society and that's for a whole other topic. Uh, but they just bought one uh, Skybox uh, satellite monitoring company. This is from 500 miles up. And 500, 500 miles. miles up. And what they want to do <laughs> is monitor. This is their stated goal. They want to monitor not just whole cities. They want to monitor the whole planet and videotape it at least three times a day. The eye not in pictures, the sky. 
video tip three times a day. And so basically, as Google down here is controlling the information down below, they're also going to be controlling and monitoring from above the whole plan. This isn't make-believe. This is current technology. Yeah. This certainly enables uh, the kind of one world government described in Revelation 13. Absolutely. And uh, it is chilling if you don't know the Lord. I mean, you know, if I didn't know the Lord or anything about it, I would look at you and say, be paranoid. Be very paranoid. Yeah. But we have a greater hope, don't we? Well, and that's just it. I tell people all the time, this is not meant for the Christian, uh, for the non-Christian. Yeah, you should scare you. And I yeah. hope it scares you straight to Jesus. That's what we want. Scare right. you to the Lord. Right. We, Christians but, don't need to be alarmed. No, we're, in we're, fact, we're it should be. We're going to be covered, protected. Yeah, it, sh it should be exciting, right? Right. Because translate this, put this into the, the, the proper context here. What, what are we talking about here? We're talking about the imminency of the rapture of the church. Yeah. That Jesus comes back, it is gets at us, his bride, prior to the seven-year tribulation where all this culminates, right? Right. So since when did the news that this translates into, one rule government, big brother, what's translate into what? Oh, hey, thank you for reminding me yes, that amen, Jesus amen. Christ can come back today. How is that bad? How is that doom and gloom, as people would say, right? How would that instill fear in me? Are you kidding me? It gets me excited. It reminds, oh, yeah, I almost He's forgot coming. today. Our prince is coming. Absolutely. Amen. And if you love him, or as the scripture says, long for his appearing. Love it, lo and love his This appearing. is the most uh -huh. fantastic news that you could be encouraged with. Well, folks, uh, we're talking with Pastor Billy Crone from uh, Las Vegas. Student of prophecy of the word of God. Uh, a lot of th things are happening these days. And we want you to be ready. We want you to uh, walk with confidence. Those of you who know the Lord. And use every day to share your faith. To tell somebody that you care about that Jesus is the only way. If you don't know the Lord, we want you to come to him. Because he loves you. He came from heaven. He crossed space and time and invaded the actual body and portaled into this earth through the womb of a virgin. He lived a sinless life, a perfect life, a life of love and service and giving, and then he gave his life on the cross. And as we referenced to him earlier in this program, as he died, he satisfied the wrath of God, the wrath of God that our sin and rebellion has deserved. And it's not fair. It's not fair to Jesus, but it's free to us, and he chose to do it. So that we can actually walk away free, forgiven, hardened, righteous. There's nothing like it in all the universe. And your life will come together and have the meaning, the purpose that God wants it to when you come to Christ. And if you never have, I want you to think about it right now, wherever you are. And God lets you find this channel. God lets you hear this message. And God is still searching for you, coming for you. Would you just turn to him and cry out to him? Leave him now in his name. Let's keep looking up.